Uh, hi guys, uh, welcome to part seven of uh, the series of videos that I've been making on orals preparation for second mates. So mariners and seafarers who intend to go for their second mates oral examination will benefit from watching these videos. I hope you have watched the previous six parts. If not, then the link to those videos is in the description section below. Please make sure you watch it. Uh, today I'll discuss a set of five different questions that I've not discussed before. Maybe you know the answers already. That's fantastic. If you don't know, you learn something. If you know, then it will just confirm your knowledge or you may have something to add to the answer that I give you today. Then uh, that will give you some confidence as well. So let's get started with the first question. Uh, so the first question is uh, for what would you use a hydrometer when aboard a ship? So sometimes uh, students are uh, or they rather get confused between what is a hydrometer and what is a hygrometer. Now a hygrometer will be covered in my next video, but a hygrometer is used to calculate or rather assess the relative humidity in the atmosphere. But a hydrometer, as you see in the picture here, is used to obtain the density of the dock water. So the water in which your ship is floating. Uh, the obtained value is then used in conjunction with the fresh water allowance to calculate the dock water allowance. That is the amount that the vessel may submerge her load line mark in any water other than the sea water. And of course, vice versa as well. You basically you should know that you use the hydrometer to obtain the density of the water in which the ship is floating. So what you see here on your screen is the hydrometer. You basically suspend it in the water so what would you do is you would uh, and we'll talk about that in the next question as well as to how you do that so let's go to the next question but before i go to the next question i just want to show you that uh, you see the sphere and the top part of the sphere the the longer length of the hydrometer has the markings on it so basically those markings are the density markings so we'll talk about how uh, the water uh, how the reading or the density is read off the longer scale of the hydrometer so the ball and the bottom arrangement allows it to be suspended in a bucket of water and uh, the hydrometer then sinks or rises to the level of the density of the water and the water level is uh, marks wherever it marks the scale of the hydrometer you just read off the density from there all right uh, how so the next question or a follow-up question could be when obtaining the density of the dock water using a sample bucket of water obtained from the dock how would you ensure accuracy of your hydrometer reading so what you normally do is uh, on the ship is we use a bucket and a rope arrangement and we lower the bucket and obtain a sample of the dock water filling the bucket uh, to almost 95% uh, of the bucket's height and uh, we then suspend the hydrometer we give it a, a quick spin to break any surface tension against the scale bar and then we wait for the hydrometer to settle and then after a few uh, minutes we read off the reading but when when you're obtaining the sample you have to make sure that you obtain the sample from the right space so that would mean that you have to get a sample which is uncontaminated with any kind of debris or any kind of uh, pollutants so especially drawing water from the aft part of the vessel is uh, not advisable because from the aft part of the vessel you may have some minor discharges it could be ballast water discharges oily water discharges or um, uh, you know propeller wash coming in so it kind of uh, uh, mixes up the water there uh, so of course uh, you try to get a, a sample from a part of the dock water which is clean which is uncontaminated uh, from any kind of discharges from the vessel so maybe advisable is from somewhere in the center part of the vessel or from a part of the dock where there has been uh, where there is no ship uh, because uh, that would be the best part to get the water from if there is no ship alongside uh, otherwise uh, try to get it from a part from where the ship has not released any kind of discharges get a clean sample as much as possible uh, let me tell you here practically it's a uh, very difficult to get a clean sample of water along the dock side but you try your best the third question is today is uh, 
on a roll on a roll off vessel or a roro vessel you are on stations on the bridge prior to sailing the cargo load has just completed so the cargo loading discharging has been completed how would you know that the stern ramp and the bow door or visor are locked down and secured ready for sea so what you see in the picture here is of course the stern ramp of a roro vessel roro vessels are normally vessels which carry cars or vehicles there could be a combination of uh, cars vehicles and containers or car vehicles containers passengers or cars and vehicles and passengers so it depends on whether it's a roro passenger ship or a roro container ship or just a pure roro ship that carries cargo like vehicles but how would you know that the door which is the stern ramp or the bow door has been locked down now one of the incidents in the past on one of the ship has been where the vessel's bow door was left open and the rough seas led to the seas being shipped inside the vessel and the ship sinking and a lot of people dying so in the past these incidents have happened now of course these days you have the ism checklist there as well but people sometimes just stick off the ism checklist and don't follow the instructions really uh, sometimes they normally do so how would you know that you have closed down so of course you have to make sure that you go as per the ism checklist for the departure checklist for the vessel and make sure that you don't only take it off but you also ensure that this turn ram door is closed so it is a requirement that uh, roro vessels have closed circuit television cameras or cctv monitoring all these access points into the vessel this is also a part of the requirement for the isps for the security check as well international ship security so it would be necessary to check the visual display monitor to see the watertight integrity of the ship is intact uh, you can use the cameras to do so you can send somebody visually as well to do so and this would additionally be checked by a red slash green light telltale sensor activated display showing all green lights so green light means that it's closed red light means that it's still open each station operator or deck officer would also verbally confirm by radio that the respective aperture is closed and locked so you can do that visually you can do it through the cctv camera you can send somebody and visually confirm it as well you can choose the sensor lights to confirm so there are these these are the different ways that you confirm you cannot leave these doors open because it's going to be unsafe for navigation the fourth question today is uh, describe how you would take a ship's boat away from the vessel's side when the parent vessel is underway and making way through the water at about four knots so you I just put the picture here alongside uh, the answer so that you get an idea of how the ship's boat will be taken away or rather steered away from the vessel side especially when the vessel or the parent vessel which is a bigger ship is actually making way through the water although not at very high speed but four knots four knots is not a negligible speed it's uh, still uh, making way through the water so how would you go about doing that so make sure that the boat spinner and when we say boat it's a live boat we are talking about the live boat spinner is secured well forward on the parent vessel as you see in the picture then lower the boat to the surface with the crew wearing suitable clothing and life jackets like i always say that whenever you go for oral examination make sure that in your answer the safety aspect is covered well whether you are a junior officer or a senior officer and the surveyor will frown upon if you ignore the safety aspects so whenever you are asked a question always think about especially these kind of operational procedures think about the safety aspects of each operation and include them even though you may feel that uh, it's going to make your answer longer but make sure you uh, mention the safety aspect okay then have the boat's engine operational but in neutral gear and have the bowman and the crew stand by to slip and clear the boat falls the live boat falls once at the surface and the falls are clear the cox should then use the tiller that is the wheel and the rudder angle to shear the boat away from the ship side once at the point of maximum shear that you see here position 3 or 4 slack painter to permit slipping by movement of rudder or bow angle so keep the painter attached till you reach the position 3 or 4 and then uh, painters have quick release systems you can release them from inside the live boat as well you have quick release system so you can use the quick release system and release the pointer painter especially when it has sheared away uh, from the parent vessel as you see in the picture here the last question for today's video and i try to keep these videos short so i just use four or five questions here every time uh, so that you guys don't get bored 
especially if you know the answers already what is the purpose of tracing pendants fitted to the live boards so if you don't know what tracing pendants are you can see i have given you two pictures here one is a close-up picture of the tracing pendant the other one is showing the position of the tracing pendant with respect to the david launched live boards and how it uh, what what's important the importance of it during the launching but basically the purpose of tracing pendants are to bring the boat alongside the ship during launching so especially when you uh, launch it from the stored position to the embarkation deck the boat may sometimes swing outward and the tracing pendants ensure that the boat even though may swing forward is brought back close to the embarkation deck for safe embarkation now this is very important especially if the parent vessel that is a bigger ship the ship has an adverse list so this will ensure that the boat is still alongside the embarkation deck ensuring everybody's safe embarkation onto the boat for any kind of abandoned ship procedure so i hope you guys liked today's video let me know through your likes and comments as to what you thought about these videos or whether i missed anything or not and the next topics you would want me to cover during or for an oral examination preparation video i'll keep preparing these videos and i'll take up a set of a few different questions every time questions that i have not covered through my other videos all right so all the best and good luck